So now in this video, we're going to look at schematic diagrams. So this is the first of a series of videos. I do not have a number of videos I'm going to make. I'm just going to make them as I go, as I think of ideas. So if you have any questions, make sure to ask them. I will probably address them in a future video and uh, during the time period I'm making them. It's kind of awkward going back to a topic a year or two after you made a series of videos. But in any case, we have uh, physical resistors here, those there, and then this one here. And if you see this symbol or that symbol, usually they're all over in a more complicated uh, schematic diagram. That means it's a resistor. You usually see either that one or that one. That one, the jagged lines, is more common in the U.S. and a bunch of other countries. I don't know how many, but uh, they'll just use a rectangle with the value written, I think, inside of the rectangle whereas the value for this one is written on top. So these are 220 ohm resistors. This is a 10 ohm resistor. A lot more current goes through here. It gets a lot hotter. It has to dissipate more heat. So if you don't see a wattage rating, this is 10 watt, these are quarter watt, so 0.25. You wanna keep it about half of the rated value though. But if you don't see a wattage rating, it's probably one of these. So we got the blue one and the beige ones. The main difference is the blue one has one more stripe, so you can get a little more accurate value of resistance. And then it has a brown stripe at the end, whereas the beige ones have a gold stripe at the end. So the beige ones are 5%, higher or lower than the rated value. The blue one, 1%, higher or lower than its rated value. So I'm not gonna go through that too much. They're probably in baggies that are labeled. That one's at two kilo ohms. I got that from the Make Electronics Kit. These ones I got from an LED kit, just a bunch of 220 ohm resistors. And then this one's from my resistor kit. It has the value written on the paper there. But you should read the uh, color code too. So now moving along, the LEDs. So the LEDs come in a bunch of different sizes. The five millimeter is common, and so is the three millimeter. So we got the five millimeter baggie there, three millimeter baggie. I mostly use three millimeters. They uh, just fit on the breadboard really nicely. They don't take up much space. You can still see them, whereas these are bigger, and then that one's really obnoxious. So LEDs are polarized. They're a type of diode. So you can see there's the diode schematic symbol, and there's the LED schematic symbol. So those are two separate components. But LEDs are still diodes, but they light up. So these arrows kind of indicate there's light being emitted. They are polarized, though the anode has to be more positive than the cathode for it to conduct. Same with the rectifier diode. There's some diodes that you use backwards for specific reasons, but we're not gonna worry about that in this video. This is a basic electronics video. So this one, this large one, you can see that uh, the longer lead there, that is the anode. The shorter lead is the cathode if you have not trimmed it. If you have trimmed it, you gotta test it in some way. The, this green one here, again, long lead anode, short lead cathode, you're probably not going to see it, but there is a flat edge on the cathode side. So you may be able to see that. Whereas it's round all the way around the rest of the component. But it's a little flat right there where the cathode is. So that cathode is the stripe right there. That's the way you need to wire it up. When you're reading the schematic, wherever it tells you to put this cathode, you put either the short lead or the flat edge right there. And not all of them, as I said, have that flat edge. So now let's move on. The power supply. So this is actually a schematic symbol for a battery, the one that you see here. But, and down here you can see another way you indicate the voltage. So we're gonna use a five volt power supply. Generally, I would use this schematic right there. We got a couple other schematics we're gonna look at, but uh, normally I would use this one for five volts. But you could also have the uh, battery symbol and maybe five volts, maybe six volts, maybe nine volts, whatever voltage they recommend you use. And so if it's a battery, it's gonna be some multiple of that type of battery. So that's a topic for future videos. The main takeaway is that's the power supply right there, the schematic symbol for it. And you connect the components to it based on the connections you see. We'll get to that coming up. So now there's switches. So the old mechanical flip switch was uh, indicated by this. These push button switches came out, they fit on the breadboard nicely. I don't have any mechanical switches that fit the breadboard nicely. And so 
I think you'll probably see push button switches more often now uh, especially for just temporary uh, presses so this little one fits on the breadboard nicely this one's easier to see it's bigger and uh, but uh, I find it's less reliable the more I use these they, they don't make contact over time as well as that one but in any case there you can see it's a push button now the switch as long as you're happy with a push button switch if you see in the schematic diagram one of these switches single pull single throw you can substitute it it doesn't matter all it's telling you is you have a way to make and break a connection right there and uh, usually though with this one you put the arm whatever wherever the arm is usually it's inside the switch you may not be able to tell but you put the arm on the positive side and then the side that it connects to over there this means single pull single throw so that's telling you you have one path for current to go through when the switch is closed so sometimes there's another one of these up here you can either connect to that one or connect to that one and power two different circuits at different times and there's a bunch of other options but this is the basic uh, mechanical switch right there and these are just single pull single throws so they're separated from uh, top to bottom when you put them in the breadboard the way that the pins fit but if you press the button then this connects to both of those pins or that one connects to both of those pins so these two are always connected those are always connected when you press this those two pins connect to those two pins it's a closed switch so now we're going to actually start putting together a circuit so these days this is really the first circuit you learn to make there used to be uh, light bulbs before LEDs for even basic electronics and light bulbs protected themselves from a certain voltage whereas LEDs do not they need a resistor to limit current to prevent them from being destroyed so we're gonna make uh, one of the simplest circuits you can make now an LED that turns on or off depending on the position of the switch so again as I said before you may see a switch with an arm there so single pull single throw one connection point you can substitute it with a push button switch as long as the push button switch meets your needs which this does so now you can see we got this one it's in a clockwise formation usually you follow a current path from positive to negative like that so we have the same thing here I added a little bit though a lot of times you'll see this symbol right there so that's ground that's our zero volt reference point we'll come back to that later basically that usually means that uh, we're calling this zero volts right there normally we just do that but that's indicating on the schematic diagram that you're doing so and then in this case a 5 volt power supply we have 5 volts higher than that up here that's our zero volt reference point so again we'll come to that also sometimes you'll see a uh, in this case for the switch S1 and then resistor R1 LED LED1 and there may be more LEDs it might say LED 1 2 and then 3 and then switch 1 here there might be another switch that says S2 right there and you just the more switches you got you keep adding an S and a number same with the resistor and then usually they'll be part of the sheet that gives you some more specifics about it so here I wrote 220 ohm right next to that resistor that's more normal and uh, sometimes you'll see both the 220 ohm and an R1 or whatnot. So depends on the source that uh, you're looking at. But you might have like R1 and then a note for it over there. And then over here we got a normally open. That's what N note stands for. It's normally open. You have to flip it to turn it off. The push button switch. Mine are normally open. And then single pull, single throw. So again, one powering point and then one connection point and then an open point single pull single throw and LED there maybe I'm gonna note to use a three millimeter for whatever reason and these LEDs they have a 20 milliamp maximum amount of current that you should put through them and that's usually what uh, the resistor value is selected for so this 220 ohm resistor will limit the current through the LED so in any case that's some more information you may get from the schematic so 
sometimes they put extra information on there. They don't leave you completely to yourself just with the schematic there. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a switch and it fits pretty nicely, these little ones here, into the board. I want to make sure that uh, that pins directly across there and then that pins directly across there. I usually straddle, there's no connection in the middle right there because nothing will uh, connect to it and the board's trying to push this out a bit but in uh, any case we have that pin going there that pin going to there now we're going to connect that to the positive side of the power supply we have the power supply here it powers positive there and then negative there and we have a little jumper here so right now it's set to 5 volts it's turned off though if I move this jumper here then it will be 3.3 volts so that red rail will be 3.3 volts higher than that one now if I put it over here this is 5 volts higher than that one and we can work our way across too so we got 5 volts there 5 volts there we are going to take this jumper here and connect one side of the switch to the positive rail so we have that there so as you can see this just tells us the connection we need to make positive side of the power supply to the switch that's all this is telling us the actual layout and even the actual power supply that we use is up to us we don't have to use a battery just because the battery schematic symbol is there so I can put this here or here or I could use a little orange jumper it's the exact same connection for this particular switch now let's uh, put it back over here just to uh, kinda separate things a little bit more now we're gonna take the uh, resistor you can see the resistor is the next component and resistors don't necessarily have to come before LEDs but normally they do and some people might be really irked if you don't put them in that order right there but electrically it does not matter so uh, let's put that there and move this gray jumper we don't need to connect it to this gray jumper now let's grab the uh, next component so there you can see now we connect to an LED and this is where you have to be careful so the LED is polarized we just talked about that a little bit ago I'm not going to go into that too much detail I can't find the LED I'll be right back all right I got an LED here now so again this is polarized so this is where the long lead is we already talked about that so we have not trimmed this so it works pretty nicely if we trimmed it we would have to look over here the short lead has a flat edge so the long lead the anode that's the main thing though it's an anode connects to the resistor and then we're going to put the short lead the cathode down one row so that's one thing I do is I work positive up and then down towards negative usually and also positive from the left to the right one or both of those now let's move this jumper and now you can see that the cathode of the LED goes to the negative side of the power supply which is the blue row right there and so I'm going to set that jumper right there, make the connection. And now, as always, you should double check the wiring. I feel pretty confident I didn't miss anything. And it uh, looks pretty good. I could easily I turn the uh, power on. This is getting kind of loose here. So when it's newer, it makes a better connection. So we have the 5 volt power supply here. I have a thing that plugs into an outlet and it can set different voltages. I have 9 volts coming here and it's outputting 5 volts or 3.3 volts. So there's a range of voltages you can feed it, but it's got to be higher than what's being output. So in any case, now you can see I hit the switch, the LED comes on. So this is about the simplest circuit and you're going to see circuits like this in this form. You just follow the same uh, path for building it. You should start building it on breadboards. There's other ways to build circuits, but these, the components pop right in and out as need be. You miss a connection, you can just easily readjust the components and uh, fix it and whatnot. It's great for learning. These are called breadboards. This is a breadboard power supply. It plugs right into the breadboard really nicely. As you can see there, it's got these pins on the bottom and they go into the power supply right there also it has this right here USB this is an output so you can plug a USB in there and power something from a USB if you have the right cable 
And now we're going to look at another way you will often see schematics. So we have the 5 volts up there. That's to let us know we're using a 5 volt power supply. And it goes to a switch. Same thing. And we could put it, as I said over here, this jumper over there. It doesn't matter. But it comes to the resistor, other side of the resistor, to the anode or the LED, the cathode, down there, to our negative rail. Sometimes you'll see these lines there or a triangle to indicate ground. And if you have multiple power supplies or something, you connect all their negative rails together, if it's a direct current like we have here, and then each one of them can power different circuits. They all end at the same point though, and that way you can wire different power supply circuits together. One can control the other or whatnot. And as I said before, things are usually drawn out, where uh, the more left side is more positive and the more right side is more negative and uh, we don't have that here here we have a clockwise motion up here we'll look at we'll see more positive to the left more negative to the right here we have the more positive up and then the more negative down other side of the circuits there is clockwise so let's get to the next uh, version of this circuit so now moving along to this one which we kind of saw a little bit earlier this one goes positive to the left working towards the negative to the right and we're using again the ground symbol there's a 5 volt difference across here and there is more information written on here though so you won't always see this kind of stuff but I added some more analysis so sometimes you'll get information about the circuit added to it so that you understand the circuit better so what I'm telling you is when I close the switch first off the LED will light that doesn't uh, not indicated on here but we close the switch the LED will light as you can see there and we can estimate about 14.5 milliamps of current is going to go through this circuit because I know that about 1.8 volts is going to be blocked by the LED that's just something I know from studying electronics and testing them out and whatnot so it's going to be about that it's not going to be perfect it varies slightly the more current going through it, the higher voltage it's going to block. Less current, the less voltage it's going to block. But the thing is, it's going to block some voltage. That's blocking the voltage from the power supply. So, it's going to block about 1.8. 5 subtract 1.8 is 3.2. And so, we can use Ohm's Law. That's what this is, Ohm's Law, to uh, calculate that. So, that'll give us 0 0.014545 for infinity. But uh, ultimately, you convert that the amps into milliamps. A milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. So you take that divided by a thousand and you get that. And so that is what this is telling you. And this is kind of an indication you're taking a current measurement there. You don't have to. And the thing about this number is that's the current going through that particular part there. And it's also the current going through the LED, the current going through the resistor, and the current going through the switch. It's just a solid current when components are in series. It's like a pipe with water going through it. Whatever water is coming in one side of the pipe is the same amount of water going out the other side. There's only one path for it to go. It's the same with electrical current. It's just not quite as easy to uh, tell that uh, current is, but that's the main takeaway. So in any case, I also wrote here that this should be a one quarter watt resistor. Usually you won't see that if it is a quarter watt. I showed you a 10 watt resistor later and if you saw like 10 ohms, 10 watts, you would want to use that resistor, not a quarter watt. You'll burn out a quarter watt for sure if uh, the circuit's intended for a 10 watt resistor. So in any case, this is all stuff. It's to inform you of these things and the nice thing is you can take a multimeter and actually measure it. So that's what we're going to do now and that's what you should do with uh, analysis. Also I put the power down there. The resistor in this particular circuit when we're pushing the button it's only having to dissipate about 0 0.046 watts of power so that's about uh, 46 milliwatts of power and that's far less than an eighth of a watt you still want to stay about an eighth of a watt even if you're using a quarter watt and uh, LEDs you want to keep them under about 20 milliamps for most LEDs basically as much current as you need to to get it bright enough but no more and stay below 20 milliamps for the most part so in any case let's take the uh, multimeter and uh, verify some of these things so 
First off, the power supply. When you see the ground symbol, that lets you know that that is for the black probe. So it says COM right there. It doesn't say negative and positive. It says common and then voltage there. So that's the voltage in relationship to COM. And normally, common, normally you put that wherever you see the ground symbol is. So in this case, we're going to measure the power supply voltage. These two points go directly to the power supply. It doesn't matter if I go there or there or there. They plug right into the rail and uh, we get pretty much a direct connection no matter where we connect. So right there you can see 5 volts for the power supply. If the ground symbol was on this side of the circuit for whatever reason, you may see that. And you may see a negative voltage there. And you can see that with the meter once I get a good connection. There we go. There you can see a negative voltage. So sometimes there are negative voltages. Usually there's also positive voltages in that case. But that can happen. So the voltages are in relationship to ground. That's what ground stands for. For direct current it's pretty straightforward. That's zero volts and that's five volts higher. Uh, pretty straightforward. So now I have the voltage across the resistor and the LEDs. Now that is while the switch is closed. Let's look at the switch first. So not all the power supply voltage is going to reach the switch because the LED is a semiconductor. So it's still blocking some of the uh, voltage from reaching the switch and there's a little, tiny bit of current going through the meter because of leakage to uh, to lower the voltage a little bit but in any case you're gonna see when I close the switch the voltage across the switch goes to nothing so the rest or all of the power supply voltage is across the resistor and the LED so we got 5 volts about 3.2 it's probably not going to be exact is across the resistor and about 1.8 is across the LED. So we can quickly look at that. That is well the switch is closed. And uh, there we go. So you can see it's not, it's a little more than 2.8. So again, these are estimates, but they're good enough estimates. You can quickly design a circuit with estimates. And unfortunately, that looks like about the voltage we lost across the switch. It's kind of odd that it's negative that way. But in any case, this, this is all just. Uh, leakage so it's hardly noticeable current that is occurring uh, for reasons we're not going to get into this video but in any case main takeaway we close the switch now you can see two volts across the LED and in any case we have a 220 ohm resistor we can calculate based on the voltage across it so when I did my calculation I just went with 3.2 volts but it's going to be close so with current measuring current we have to open the circuit so one easy way to open the circuit is just to detach the resistor there. Now I got it way up here. It's still connected across through there. And uh, we'll just look at 14.5. It's going to be about that, not exact. So we got down here to the resistor, over there the LED. And so the anode of the LED will be the uh, more negative side. I got to put the meter to measure milliamps of current. So we're going to go over there. I feel really safe that it's in milliamps. If we thought it might be near the amp range, we would go to amp and move this plug to amp and verify it's less than one amp by enough. But uh, we know it's going to be in milliamps. Uh, the LED would have burnt out if it was anywhere near amps. So there we go. We set it to milliamps. And this is the more positive side. That's the more negative side. Fortunately, we have to open the circuit and press the button there you can see it's a little less than 14.5 uh, milliamps but as we saw before the LED was blocked and a little more current than I estimated also we actually didn't have to do this I'm uh, kind of bummed I didn't think of this earlier but it's kind of a good thing I did we have the switch the switch is open right now we can complete the circuit by uh, and that's what you do when you measure current you're completing the current through the meter. As I said, every single series component is passing the same current. When we close the switch, it's not influencing any of the current, the resistor and the diode are, but it's letting current flow through it. We're going to bypass the switch and let that current flow through the meter. But uh, that's why the uh, current measurements are the uh, trickiest ones to make. And so no currents going through right now. And everything looks 
plugged in, all right? There we go. I guess the switch wasn't in there, all right? So there you can see, we got the same current. So we're just closing the uh, circuit. We're going around the switch. It's going through the meter and then the resistor. But we can take the terminals that are there and make it. So you can measure the current that's going through a circuit while the switch is closed just by jumping the gap of the switch even while it's open. And we could just go to a two points like that. So, so if you have a switch there, it's really easy to measure the current. As you can see there, you can't measure the current while the switch is closed. And uh, you may get some reading, but it's going to be off. And uh, if you don't open up the circuit, you got to open up the circuit and have it go through the meter if you're going to close the switch like that to get current to flow through there. So hopefully that all made sense. The main takeaway is when you're reading schematics, you may see some analytical information about it. So circuit analysis is when you're actually paying a lot of attention to the exact values of uh, voltage and current and other things. So we just saw that uh, we take a measurement there. We could also measure the resistor. If you have uh, resistors, you haven't learned the color code, you don't know what bag they came from or whatever, you can take the resistor, put it on two separate rows, and this is an auto range meter. We just have to set it to uh, resistance there. Some of them you gotta watch the settings. So like with voltages, you gotta put it to a higher voltage than what you know it's gonna be to avoid damaging the meter, same with uh, current. But in any case, uh, we can just put the probes across there, and you can see it's uh, not quite 220 ohms, but it's close. These cheap ones I don't think are as accurate as they should be, but still, it's uh, really close. So with our circuits, we don't need that kind of precision. So this video went a whole lot longer than I thought, but hopefully you still enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.